Let's talk about milk on the carnivore diet because some of us love it and others avoid it like a plague. Welcome back to my channel. I am Sylvia. I'm a carnivore diet coach and a big city mom. As most of us know, at least I hope we do, milk comes from animals so it is suitable for the carnivore diet, but does it work for everybody? Not everybody can handle dairy on the carnivore diet, especially milk. On the other hand, there are people that claim that they were able to resolve many of their health issues by drinking of milk. However, for the most part, this milk is raw organic from grass-fed cows. And that brings me to my next point. Not all milk is created equal. By far, the lowest quality of milk that you can get is the skim milk from a supermarket that is pasteurized from conventionally raised cows. That is probably the worst quality and you will not miss out on a lot if you just skip it altogether. Organic A2 from grass-fed cows, nonetheless bought in the store, would be a probably a better choice, easier for you to digest, but because it is pasteurized, it is not ideal. Now, why do we care about milk being pasteurized? It is true that you will kill some of the harmful bacteria in it by pasteurizing it and extend its shelf life, which is what the supermarkets uh, like. But on the other hand, you will also kill a lot of beneficial bacteria along with a enzymes that help us to digest the milk. One of those enzymes is called lipase and it helps us humans to break down the cow's milk. Another thing is the A1 versus A2 milk. A1, it is a more modern version of casein. More ancient cows, those as Jersey cows, produce milk with a2 type casein which is a lot more easier on our guts so if you are going to drink milk your best bet is to get it straight from the farm unpasteurized a2 milk so you have to ask the farmer if they have jersey uh, cows because these are the ones that produce a2 milk and get it definitely full fat and you can drink it and feed it to your family with great success and the good news is that most states will allow you to go to the farm and get raw milk directly from the farmer there are however about six states that they will still not allow you to visit the farmer and get milk directly from them and new jersey being one of them right across the river luckily i'm in new york and I'm able to do it. Uh, although I get my milk actually from uh, the farm in Pennsylvania, which also allow you to get raw milk straight from the farm. And if you are wondering if a sheep's milk or goat's milk is also a good option, the good news is, yes, there are good options. Similarly to Jersey cows, uh, these animals produce A2 type casein milk. And I think there is a conclusion that particularly goat's milk and even sheep's milk resembles or is similar to the human milk and therefore if you are forced to look for a baby formula, the best choice would be to get the ones that are made from goat milks or sheep's uh, milk proteins. It's just the thing that um, here in the United States it is easier to find farms with Jersey cows than with a large uh, population of goats or sheep. So for me, it's not that easy to find goat or sheep's milk, but cow's milk A2 is easy. In my household, the main consumers of the milk are my boys. The oldest one is six years old. He has his first cup of milk uh, in the morning with his breakfast. And then throughout the day, he'll drink some kefir or some yogurt that I make from that very same milk. Um, there is no commercial yogurts, but they do love the yogurts that I make for them. I will throw in some fruit and some honey to it, a delicious dessert from a raw milk uh, yogurt. And same thing goes for kefir. Kefir is particularly great when it's really hot outside and you want to cool their bodies. And I'll add some uh, seasonal fruit and blend it up and my boys love it. My youngest drinks uh, milk uh, three times a day, five ounces in the morning for his uh, noon nap and before he goes uh, to sleep in the evening and both boys were weaned off of my uh, milk uh, at 18 months and I transitioned them to the raw milk that I'm getting from the same farm for the last six years and so let's talk about the consumption of milk by the adults and for the conversation that we are having here right now let's imagine that we all have access to the raw organic grass-fed milk 
and still it is not appropriate for everybody. One argument is, and it is the argument driven by the clinic in Hungary, Paleo Medicina, that they develop their own diet, paleo ketogenic diet that excludes dairy altogether. They do state that there is a growth factor in milk that is appropriate for for the young but not so much for the adults when our growing processes stop and we just need to maintain our bodies and they do point out and i think there is a, a scientific evidence to show that the growth factor in dairy can play a role in proliferation of, of some of the uh, cancers and i think it's pretty well demonstrated that it may influence growth of the prostate cancer in men so perhaps for the adults uh, you can have milk as a condiment, maybe if you really like it in your coffee, but um, I wouldn't drink it like three times a day uh, as a lot of children do. And what about people that go on a carnivore diet to reverse chronic disease? Myself and working with other clients, I can tell you that if you have autoimmunity, any version of it, you are better off to staying away from milk no matter what quality of milk it is. And speaking from my own experience, I've tried everything. Raw milk, A2 milk, sheep's milk, goat's milk, fermented cheeses, unpasteurized fermented cheeses, homemade kefir, homemade yogurt. And the, the, during the dietary intervention period into my rheumatoid arthritis, I could not tolerate any form of dairy. Good or bad, pristine milk didn't matter. It was just giving me major flare-ups in my joints. Now the good news is that ever since I went on the carnivore diet to reverse rheumatoid arthritis, I was able to introduce dairy here and there, but I don't drink a glass of raw milk like that. I will have my own homemade yogurt from time to time, not too often, and the same goes for uh, kefir that I make by myself. Other than that, I'm very careful with dairy because it really doesn't go well with me. I do love it. I do love the flavor of cheeses. I love the flavor and the sourness of kefir so goes for yogurt but there is something about me i just don't do well if i were to bring in dairy on a regular basis and the form of dairy i'm consuming it's really high quality i basically make it all by myself from uh, raw grass-fed organic milk and still not ideal for me at all all right so this will do it for this week's video i hope you'll find this information useful and share it with anybody that you think can benefit and if you are dealing with autoimmunity and you are on the carnivore diet and you're hoping to get rid of it with carnivore diet, get rid of dairy, especially, especially if you are dealing with rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. Anything that has to do with joints, dairy just doesn't go well with. Also, if you are recovering from cancer, it's a good idea. Just forget about dairy, just eliminate it, at least for the period of time altogether. And also, if you are one of those people that just can't lose those last 10, 15 pounds, even if you're on a carnivore diet, try to get rid of dairy and see what happens. Oftentimes, dairy is the one that will slow down your metabolism and won't allow you to get to your desired weight. Other than that, with time, if you really like dairy, you may be able to introduce it. And the best way to introduce it is to have it in some form of fermentation, so like a yogurt or kefir but the best to make it yourself and it's really easy to make it yourself at home i have videos about it uh, i'll link them in the description box check them out otherwise i'll see you in my next video bye